My dad had this crazy dream, which scared the shit out of him. You know those dreams that seem extra special? Almost like a glimpse into something to come? He's the kind of guy to not joke or make up shit. But he told us about this dream, and it goes pretty much like this. Dad wakes up and feels and tastes some kind of ionization in the air. Goes outside and sees clouds that look like fire and lightning. Everyone walks outside all over the planet to look at the strange clouds. Blue lights appear in the sky, and a trumpet starts blaring. Blue lights start surrounding people and start sucking people up into the sky. In a blue tractor beam, everyone's laughing and crying with Joe. The rapture has come. My dad and the rest of the family and a few people we know are taken out of tractor beams by disc-shaped UFOs. The UFOs are being piloted by the Greys. Dad starts seeing things through a woman he doesn't know's eyes. She's in a tractor beam going higher and higher. There is some kind of triangle with an eye and wings on the side way up in space. Hyper vivid celestial imagery as she approaches the eye. Goes through the eye and everything becomes black. Wakes up in some sort of holding pen with millions of other people. Small port window she looks outside and sees an armada of giant UFOs. Sees people in blue tractor beams going into the ships. A horn blows. The pen is illuminated and they are in the center of some kind of pit. Reptilian aliens and a Colosseum style seated environment are all screeching and salivating. Horn blares again and the reptilians all start jumping into the pit to eat everyone. You could hear the screams from all the ships echoing for some reason in the emptiness of space. A priestly class reptilian stands at the top to watch everything happen. Cuts back to my father and us in the gray ship. The greys are taking us to some kind of desert oasis place. We can see the greys dismantling every remnant of human civilization. We see all the cities turned into dust and then we see massive tidal waves all over the planet to wash it all away. The water settles, and the greys drop us off with others who were picked up to survive. Basically, have information relayed to us that we are to restart civilization, and to create a sizable population again. Get told we are a farm planet for an alien ritual that takes place every 12,000 years. We try our best to sketch the truth into rocks with words, paintings, and other glyphs. We create stone monuments so hopefully the next cycle would find out and fight back. We slowly grow a sizable population and leave the garden. Cycle starts again. All the truths about this cycle are either forgotten or warped so far from the truth that they become myths and legends. No one remembers in the next cycle. That dream changed my dad. He doesn't joke about things anymore. It was odd. Hey X, I have a story for you. I can't clearly remember when my grandpa, rest in peace, actually told me about this. The memory kind of popped out sometime after he died. Early 40s, grandpa was about 10 at the time. Small village in southern Sardinia poor as fuck. To this day, the poorest region in Italy. People used to live in houses made of landini. Basically, a sun-dried mixture of clay mud and hay. Some medieval type shit. Grandpa is playing with some friend in the streets. It's getting late and there's a curfew. Time to get home. Grandpa decides to take the long way home as he was in the mood for a walk. At some point, he hears someone calling his name faintly, almost like a whisper. Freaks him out, so he starts walking faster. He hears it again, this time louder and clearer in the voice of a man without any kind of accent. This is important because us Sardinians have a very strong accent, and if you know about it, it's immediately noticeable. Grandpa also used to have a unique ancient Roman-inspired name that his father made up, so there was no mistaking it. Yet, there was no one in sight. It was also getting darker by the minute. Grandpa is literally shitting his pants at the moment. A strong smoke smell hits his nose. 
stronger and more pungent than a cigarette. The man calls again, this time followed by a whistle. Right here, Grandpa. Finally, leaning on a short stone wall, Grandpa saw what he described as a distinct looking man. Clean shaven, slicked back hair, smoking from a pipe, wearing leather shoes, and a long black coat. He was holding a cane in his left hand and a leather pouch in his right. As I said, at the time, people were still pretty much medieval peasants in the region, so that must have looked absurdly out of place. Come closer, said the man. No, you're going to kidnap me, Grandpa answered. Absolutely not. I actually have a present for you, replied the man as he showed Grandpa the content of the leather pouch. The pouch was allegedly full of gold coins and jewels. Grandpa knows something must be off, yet he's also very tempted. Come on, I'm gonna make you rich. Grandpa finally gives in and starts walking towards the gold. As he was getting closer, the man started to look off. He said what looked like leather shoes were actually goat-like hooves. What looked like a cashmere coat was actually made from black crow feathers. Also, his face looked like stretched out leather and some mixture of black oil and dirty blood was oozing and dripping from his slicked back hair. His cane also turned into a hissing serpent, crawling in a spiral onto the man's arm. Grandpa was now standing in front of the demonic creature, paralyzed. Its breath smelled like a rotting corpse set ablaze with motor oil. The stench probably worked like ammonia salts, and Grandpa miraculously snapped out of the terror, escaping just a moment before the demon grabbed him by the neck. He made it home running as fast as he can, without ever looking back and praying over his panting breath. Despite all this, Grandpa was still thinking about that gold and didn't sleep that night. Can't blame him since he found himself eating boiled old leather shoe soles many times. People were that poor, yes. At about 4.30 a.m., he snuck out of the house and came back to the encounter place, looking for the bag. What he found was not what he expected, though. He said he found a canvas sack full of dirt, worms, shit, and some pieces of coal. Up until the day he told me this story, Grandpa remained sure that he actually met the devil himself and managed to escape from him. Be me. Childhood, I was 11. Live in shithole, Texas. Woo. Typical, I grew up on a farm life. Cousins come and they want to walk around the property. Good idea, that JPEG. Walking by horses area with big tree right by it. I've never been comfortable by the tree. Later that night, we decide we want to go see the horses at night. So, we walk up to them and try to get their attention. Cousin starts whistling. In Mexico culture, you're not supposed to whistle late at night because of lechuzas. My face when realizing cousin probably fucked us over. Pick related. Then, I hear it. The loudest fucking screech. Yell on everyone like an autist to run back to the house. Cousin who whistled fucking stayed behind. Immediately wake up oldest brother and tell him what's happening. He grabs the rifle and hands me a flashlight and tells me to follow him. We finally get back to our cousin. Claw marks all over his back and his clothes were torn only one real seep. Had to tell parents. My dad told us we were very fucking lucky that that's all that happened. I got more stories from when I lived on the farm. Story about why we never had pets. According to Mexa mother and grandmother, evil things lurk the most when you're alone. We used to have two dogs, two full-blooded red healers. Nice, that JPEG. One month goes by, easy. Coming home from school one day, I'm told to go to our shed and to get a shovel. Digging holes to fix the fence, I think. Oldest brother tells me to go inside. Lol, okay. Few hours later, I'm told the dogs ran away. Alright, cool. Two years later, I ask my brother why we couldn't have pets. Tells me what happened to our dogs. Our dogs' throats were slit 
and were hanging from our fence. Tells me when bad things come, it always goes for the pets first. I refuse to get a pet anything ever since he told me what happened. Also can confirm this for my mom and older siblings about what happened to our dogs. I've seen a lot of shit and heard some shit. Glad we left that place before my senior year. I got a good one for you. Be me. Parents are divorced. At dad's for the time being. Live beside woods. Watching YouTube on the couch in the living room, which has a huge ass window in it. Think it used to actually be a garage or something. Light turns on in the woods across the street at around 10 p.m. Meh. Watching YouTube again. Two hours later, I get up because I'm bored to go see what dad is doing. See that the light is in the exact same spot it was on at. Didn't really question it. It wasn't too late quite yet. Hung out with dad and we watched A Quiet Place. Ending made me keck. Shotgun cock. Went back to couch to sleep on because guest bed is ass. Realize the light is still on around 2 a.m. Man, who the fuck is up at this time of night? Get curious. Woods is real close to me and the light was not far at all. Decide, fuck it. I'll just glance over there to see if everything is all right. Go out, walk to the woods, and look inside from the line which you enter. Literally, no one is using the light at all. Just sitting there. Pull out phone and take a picture. Realize that there's a piece of paper in front of the light. Pick it up. There's a smile on it. Realize I'm in a real bad spot at the moment. Hear something in the distance. Everything felt really quiet. Couldn't see anything, so picked up the bright-ass light and still couldn't see anything near me. Took a couple of pictures and skimmed over them. Saw one that gave me the biggest goosebumps I've ever had. In the background, you could see a pair of eyes. Look up in the direction I saw it in the picture, and it was to the right of me, real close, near the tree that you will see in the picture here in a second. Flashlight wasn't directly on it, but I could tell it was about six to seven inches tall, and it was anorexic as fuck. As soon as I glanced at that, I booked it. Didn't hear anything chase me. Not like I would anyways, since it managed to somehow creep on me without making a peep. Run in the house, lock the doors, tell dad, and call the police. Police can't find anything, or a trace of anything. Ended up sleeping in the guest bedroom from then on. This better be a hoax, because human eyes don't reflect light. About 12 to 13, lived in a pretty nice house. For some reason, at around 10 p.m. every night for a month, there was a single knock on my window. After a week, just accepted it. Eventually just said out loud, Can you stop? I'm trying to sleep, cunt. When it happened, stopped a week later. Still don't know why it happened. Whenever I looked out the window, no one was there. Out with my friend, sitting on a bench, be talking. People throwing us weird glances. Think it's because of the obscene topics. Don't care. Keep talking. Suddenly, one old dude comes up to me. Uh, excuse me, sir, but who are you talking to? I wish I was kidding. I've already made an appointment with a psychiatrist. Grew up having nightmares about something in my childhood room. It looked like it had no skin and just muscles and organs. It would always crawl slowly from the hallway entrance, across the rug in the middle of the room. Right before it got to me, I would scream, but no sound would come out. I would feel as though I couldn't move, and like all the energy in the room was being sucked into the closet. Pretty typical nightmare for a kid. I moved out a few years later to go live with my dad. My mom remarried, and her new husband's son moved into my childhood room. After a few months, the kid got sent away for behavioral problems. He had pissed in the corner of the room when he needed to be. The walls were ruined. He had hidden poop and socks in a drawer. But one thing he did struck me as eerie. He had pounded finished nails into the floor. 
one nail every half inch around the entrance to the room, one nail roughly every quarter inch around the closet, which had the doors torn off. When they asked why he did it, the kid told them, I had to be sure. A few weeks ago, out with Buddy at park, about 100 minutes past dusk, walk into 30 by 30 meter pavilion. I avidly invite any spirits and entities to manifest many times, orally. Suddenly feel a potent deja vu. Friend looks at me and says, Oh, seriously? And books it to car. I follow. He told me he saw a white, featureless face, taller than me, moving behind me. Chilled. Be me, mid-twenties, living alone. Wake up in the dead of night. Really odd abdominal cramps for some bizarre reason. No idea why. Go through to the bathroom. Sit down and get ready to poop. Straining. Suddenly hear this really odd raspy slash gurgling sort of rushing air sound like a balloon deflating. Whole room fills up with this awful smell of rotten meat out of nowhere. Hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Have this unreal feeling of dread. Whole house has gone dead silent. I live in the countryside, and normally you can hear some animals at night, at least. Cramps have gone, but there's no poop. There's literally nothing there. Freak out, switch on all the lights, get my 12 gauge out of the closet, and start shouting as loud as I can to scare away anything close by. Eventually calm down, but I have no idea what happened to this day. I haven't had anything like it before, or since. Still scared to go to the bathroom at night to this day. Got chills just typing this out even now. No idea what happened. Me be, out out of friend's house. Brother texts me along the lines of, I thought you had taken the back door's key. I get home a few hours later, ask what the fuck he was talking about. Says I came home earlier and called up to his window. Claimed I didn't have the key and couldn't get in. Kept insisting for a while to open the door. Brother found it creepy. He's the type to turn on every light when he's home alone. Didn't open the door and stopped replying. The thing pretending to be me went away after a while. What kind of spook is this? Be son of someone who used to have a minor modeling career. She could have become really famous. Got pregnant with me instead. I'm 100% white, by the way. She's an alcoholic and, while still really beautiful, can't get a man she's interested in. She sometimes murmurs in her sleep that she hates me. She once sleepwalked around the house with a kitchen knife, saying that she wants to kill my dad, whom I've never met. And me. So... I had a friend in elementary school, rich as shit, lived out of town in a heavily wooded area. Anytime we were at his house, we stayed in the basement. Basement had two rooms and a window. First room was a media room. Giant TV, sound system, computers, game equipment, comfy couches, the good shit. Second room was the green room. Toys, music instruments, workout equipment, shit like that. Little window led from hot tub slash back deck outside to the green room inside. Anytime I spend the night, we sleep in the media room. We were never told not to sleep in the green room, but we had no reason to. One day, another friend comes over. Well, we only have two couches, so one of us will sleep in the green room. His dad immediately shuts that down, rolling out a sleeping bag in front of the TV and making it clear we could not sleep in the green room. Fast forward a few years. Big birthday party. Too many people for the media room. Two people need to sleep in the green room. Me, since it's my house, and Anon, since my dad likes you the best, so you'll get in the least trouble. Little nervous, but fuck it. I'm a big little boy. Go to sleep on the floor while friend is passed out on workout shit. Wake up feeling uneasy. Hear footsteps. Oh fuck, oh man, we're gonna get grounded. Pretend to be asleep. Footsteps draw closer. Open my eyes just a slit. Long blonde hair. Black dress, or at least dark. Hard to tell using only moonlight. 
long fingernails, and, most notably, standing right over me. Slowly kneels on top of me, like she's about to ride me cowgirl. Lays down all the way, her head to the right of mine. I'm almost choking on perfume. Oh fuck, am I getting f***ed? She just lays there, then starts crying. Gently at first, then full on sobbing. She slowly lifts herself, puts a hand on one side of my neck, then the other. Slowly brings them together, starts putting pressure. She's slowly choking me while sobbing. I can't pretend to be asleep any longer. Eyes bolt open. Stare into her blue bloodshot eyes. She takes her hands off my neck and puts a finger to her lip as if to say, Shh. Slowly stands up and walks out. I don't fall back asleep. Next morning, we're in the hot tub. I haven't told anyone. Friend is gloating that his dad didn't catch us. Good thing my mom isn't in town. She works out super early. Excuse me? As we're getting out, he looks out the window. Huh, that's odd. Pulls window open. I thought we locked this last night. Never went back to his house after that.